Stan Jibalisco here, uh, a viewer of my channel and a reader of my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, sixth edition, has requested that I uh, describe the functions of some of the uh, individual components in chapter 26 and uh, presumably by extension, therefore, chapter 27. Um, I am assuming he's going to go on to chapter 27 after chapter 26. I already described an amplitude modulator circuit in an earlier video and uh, described the functions of the individual components in that circuit. Now let's look at a frequency modulator circuit and look at the components in that. And uh, a basic frequency modulator circuit can be found in figure 27-7 that's this figure right here on page 465 of teach yourself electricity and electronics sixth edition uh, basically what this circuit does is to modulate the frequency or alter the frequency of a coal pits oscillator circuit you can recognize that by the tap in the capacitor. The rest of the coal pits oscillator circuit, you've already seen a, a circuit like that in this particular book and in all editions of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. In fact, just a little while ago, if you're reading the book from beginning to end. It could be a Hartley oscillator circuit, but I'm doing it with a coal pits oscillator circuit because in effect we're going to vary the capacitance in the tank circuit of the coal pits oscillator which comprises these capacitors and this inductor right here and an additional mystery component you may not recognize this symbol but it is called a varactor diode varactor uh, short for variable reactor meaning that it has variable reactants, in this case, a variable capacitive reactants. And the capacitive reactants of this component depends upon the amount of reverse bias applied to the diode. It's a very special type of diode. Notice that it's reverse biased. Normally, in order to get a diode to conduct, you'd want the minus terminal here and the plus terminal here so that electron current would flow against the arrow. But we're reverse biasing this so that it, it will not conduct direct current. That produces a capacitance at the PN junction of the diode, which depends upon the width of the depletion region at that junction. And the width of the depletion region is what we vary in order to get changes in the capacitance of this diode which in effect change the capacitance in this tank circuit which forms part of the coal pits oscillator and that capacitance changes right in step with the audio input signal such as the yammering of a loon like myself w1 gv ham radio call sign into his microphone. Thank God I'm a CW operator, right? And never use voice modes. But frequency modulation can be obtained by applying an audio signal right here to a transformer, which basically isolates the microphone from the rest of the circuit. And that audio signal appears across this varactor diode in addition to the reverse bias supplied by the power supply, a battery, say. That causes, in effect, the reverse bias to fluctuate right in step with the, modulating, the modulation signal, um, such as a voice or Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony, one of my... Uh, favorite when I was a kid I used to sit for hours and listen to that symphony over and over again no wonder I turned out so weird right but 
the varactor is a variable capacitance diode when reverse biased and the variable capacitance is obtained by varying the voltage the across this diode when you get more reverse bias you get a wider depletion region and lower capacitance when you get a uh, less reverse bias you get a narrower depletion region around the PN junction and you get a higher capacitance so you can cause the capacitance to fluctuate right in step with this audio input the secondary winding of this transformer uh, would be shorted would cause the uh, bias across the diode to short directly to ground were it not for this blocking capacitor so you need this capacitor and it has to be a large enough value to pass audio signal several microfarads most likely but uh, it must not allow direct current to pass so that we don't short out the DC bias voltage. This blocking capacitor right here prevents the DC bias voltage across this diode from being affected by uh, this coil right here which would otherwise short it to ground likewise just as it would just as the secondary of this transformer would do that the a coil in the tank circuit which determines the resonant frequency of the coal pits oscillator would do the same thing so you need these blocking capacitors to prevent shorting out the the varactor bias voltage and thereby disabling your entire circuit uh, so this audio signal appears right along with the bias voltage in effect varying the bias in step with the uh, modulating signal caused by Tchaikovsky's fifth symphony or whatever uh, music suits your fancy I like uh, I happen to like uh, Norwegian progressive rock <laughs> I've just discovered it it's it's a revelation it's a new revelation for a for an old man to discover something and then he discovers it was popular in <laughs> 1980 when I was a young man so <laughs> some people never grow up that's the moral of that story but in any case when you do this when you hook up a varactor diode in this fashion to the tank circuit of a coal pits or any other type of variable frequency oscillator you will get frequency modulation of the signal and as with amplitude modulation you don't want that frequency modulation to be excessive otherwise you will get distortion which as I have already told you is the worst thing that can possibly happen to Tchaikovsky's fifth symphony and I don't imagine it would be very good for Norwegian progressive rock either Frequency modulation is used in a lot of um, amateur radio equipment at the very high frequencies, that is above 30 megahertz, and also in your venerable broadcast station, your favorite FM broadcast station, which can form part of your complicated sound system to produce surround sound, filling the room with either Tchaikovsky's music or Norwegian progressive rock take your choice but that's how it works it simply varies the capacitance of a tank circuit it within a tank circuit which varies the resonant frequency which varies the frequency of the oscillator right in step with the audio input so that's what each of these individual components do these two capacitors and that inductor determine the resonant frequency of the circuit these blocking capacitors prevent the DC bias voltage for the varactor from being shorted to ground in one case through that coil in the other case through this coil 
So that should just about outline the functions of all of the components in this little gem. Figure 27-7 illustrates this very thing on page 465 of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 6th edition, published in June of 2016 by McGraw-Hill and written by yours truly along with Simon Monk, who provided the chapters on microcontrollers and the Arduino device. The book is available at Amazon.com, and that's where I recommend you get it, and I recommend, as always, the hard copy of the book, not the electronic version, for reasons which you will discover if you decide to defy my request and produce and buy the electronic version instead. Just remember, Amazon does have a return policy. If, if you don't like the book, you can always get your money back. And forget about creating a transmitter that will broadcast any kind of frequency modulated signal. Just go buy a ready-made radio instead and become an appliance operator. Like all good radio hams these days seem to be, including yours truly. Stan Jibalisco, signing off. Best regards, and so long for now.